What's up guys, we're back, episode three, Dino Tune in the LO206. In this one we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna test all five clip positions on the needle and the carburetor. But before we get into that, there's been a couple changes to quick update. Um, I did an oil change on the engine after the uh, initial dyno pull and the break-in. I've also ran the carburetor through the ultrasonic cleaner. It was sputtering at about 4,500 RPM, so I've gone ahead and cleaned that up just for good measure. And I also realigned the intake manifold to the carburetor out of the box. It was lined up terribly, so I've gone ahead and realigned that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it.
Okay, so we're all finished up testing each one of the clip positions on the Briggs LO206 needle. I went through, I did two sessions on each clip position. One session I just did some nice smooth throttle revs and then on the second session I did an actual dyno pull. Did that for each one of the needle clips. So I've got 10 sessions of data here, so it's quite a bit of data. We'll take a look at the first uh, clip position. So we'll, we'll take a look at the, the rev and the dyno pull for clip one. And I've created a summary where I summarized all the, the data from each one of these. So I'll show you how I got the data from clip one and then I'll show you the summary once we're done. So let's, let's take a quick look at clip one. And we'll take a look at the rev first. We'll go ahead and we'll add in our lambda and our AFR. So all I did for each one of the tests is I came in here and I just grabbed a small section. So I went from the valley up to about 4,500 RPM. And then what I did is I took the average lambda and AFR and collected that data and put it into the summary for each individual clip position. And along with that, so for example, this one's 89 lambda, AFR is 1294. And then I went through and I did a dyno pull on each as well, just like we did in the previous video. And I did this for each of the clip positions as well. So we've got the dyno poll results for each one. And you know what, I, I like looking at the data like this. Some might be more familiar with looking at it with the horsepower and torque curves overlapping. So it just all depends on how you wanna look at it. Um, I prefer this view, it's a little cleaner. But I went and did that for each clip position. And you know what, let's, let's take a look at each one of the dyno poles. So I can show you the results on those. why those are opening so the reason I just did revs is because if you look at the carburetor tuning guide from Briggs um, it says the, the needle comes into play between 10 and 75 percent throttle so that's why I just did some smooth revs but here is our dyno poles for each one of the clip positions it's kind of hard to look at the torque unless we actually select our little section but if we look at the peak horsepower you can see that it doesn't change a whole lot between the different clip positions. Clip one, 8.92, clip two, 8.97, three, 8.87, 8.84, and 8.79. So pretty pretty similar dyno poles. But, um, but yeah, there's that data. So let's, let's take a quick look at the summary. So here's the summary I've created for each one of the clip positions. You can see the lambda as we moved from position one to position five, you can actually see in the lambda and the AFR that the carb does richen up um, as you get further down on the needle. And one thing I want to mention is that position four and five, the engine would not idle unless I, I cracked the throttle. And that, that kind of made me remember one time when I was at the track speaking with a guy and we were talking about um, uh, the idle of our, our engine and I remember him specifically saying that it doesn't matter how your engine idles is because you're not going to race this thing at idle. So that kind of makes me think that maybe position four might be worth testing on track because that's where our peak torque came in. We had the highest torque reading on position four. We had the highest horsepower on position two, but it would be interesting to see what uh, on track position four does. But there it is guys, there's the, the summary data for all five clip positions of the Briggs LO206 carburetor. Okay guys, we just finished up testing all five of the needle clip positions on the LO206 carburetor. So based on the testing, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use position two for the rest of the testing in these videos. And the next one we'll go ahead and we'll start testing some different float heights, see what that does to the top end carburation. But until then, plan your race, race your plan, have a good time at the track.